Hello, I'm Dr. Dina Stacer and welcome to a quick video about selling your home, tips to keep it clean and spotless while on the market. Okay, so you're planning on putting your home on the market and you know you have to keep it clean while you're waiting for buyers to show up and write an amazing offer. Here are some simple tips to help keep the home in tip-top shape, along with keeping your family on track to keep it clean too. I'm a real estate agent with a PhD in psychology. I help families buy and sell homes in San Diego. I love educating families with important real estate information so they make more money when they sell their home, have less stress, and get through the sale with the least amount of frustration, confusion, and fear. If you have any real estate questions related to selling your home, feel free to contact me and ask. There's never any obligation or pressure from me. So let's get started with selling your home. Tips to keep it clean and spotless while on the market. I am Dr. Dina, the doctor that makes house calls. In a perfect world, your entire family pitches in every morning to clean last night's clutter and mess before heading out to school and work. In the real world, however, this usually never happens. When your home is on the market, you need everyone's help to make your home look as perfect as possible. Buyers do not really need perfect. However, you have a better chance of getting more offers when your home is neat and tidy. Here is how to remain sane when you have to keep your home clean while it is on the market. Start with a deep clean. Whether you're going to stage your home or you just want to make your home look as presentable as possible when you put it on the market, you have to make it look inviting to buyers. The cleaner your home is, the more buyers will be attracted to your home and want to come see it. To clean it, you might need a team of family and friends, or you may need to hire a service to do the cleaning. Start with depersonalizing. Buyers are curious about who lives in your home. However, you need to depersonalize your home by taking down family photos, awards, and other identifying items so a buyer can see their stuff hanging on your walls and their furniture sitting in your home. This will also protect your family from anyone who is pretending to be a buyer but is actually looking to do identity theft. Depersonalizing your home requires that you are emotionally ready to sell and part with your home too. I listed one home for sale and I recommended they remove their children's photos off the wall. And my client said, but don't people want to see who lives in the home? I want to keep looking at my children's photos on the walls. I also suggested they paint the bright red walls in the living room with a neutral color. She said, if we don't sell the home, I don't want beige walls. Was she really ready to sell her home? No. Depersonalizing may seem harsh and even cruel, putting away your personal items you've lovingly placed in your home. However, you are not selling your stuff, you are selling your home. That shabby chic look in your home that you've been cultivating for years may really turn off buyers. They may not be able to see past the tons of pillows or the frilly curtains you've decorated your home with. They may hate your taste in wallpaper or your collection of feathered roosters along the top of your kitchen cabinets. To help you let go, take pictures of your home the way you've created it. You'll want to celebrate the moment you've spent decorating your home, but then you have to pack it up. Now, it sounds so insensitive, doesn't it? But if you're really ready to sell your home for the most money, you have to declutter, depersonalize, and distance yourself from your home. This is a perfect time to pack up the items you still love and organize them for the next home you'll be decorating. The less stuff you have out, the easier it will be for buyers to see themselves and their stuff in every room in your home. Buyers love a home with lots of light. If you have bright walls of color, you should paint them neutral. 
If you have dark flooring, lighten it up with mirrors on the walls and window coverings that are light and bright. You can fill your home with light by opening curtains and adding extra floor lamps so your home looks bright and inviting. Buyers love a home that has lots of light, whether it is natural light or you've added lighting in every room. Clean your way around your home. You can decide what order of rooms you want to start with cleaning. You may want to clean in a specific order, such as starting with the easiest room to clean first, or the room with the least amount of items you need to pack up, or you may just decide to dig in and work as hard as you can for a specific period of time. I use a timer and I like to play beat the clock. I decide how many minutes I'm going to clean. I estimate how much time it will take me to do a specific project, like clean out a closet or a drawer, and then I turn the timer on for less time than I've estimated to complete the project. Then I work hard to see if I can get the project done before the timer goes off. If I win, I give myself some type of reward, such as a snack, 15 minutes of reading a favorite book, a power nap of 10 minutes, etc. If I'm on a roll and I have time to work on another project, I do the same thing, which makes the job seem so much easier to tackle. You can also start by cleaning your children's rooms. A great way to get started is to clean and declutter your children's rooms first. Pack up their toys they hardly play with. Pack up the toys with a lot of pieces, like Legos. There's no need to seal these boxes, but you want to keep things organized so that you can rotate toys for your children and make the rooms easier to keep clean. Use these questions to help you declutter. Are we using this item every day? When was the last time we needed to use it? Can this item be packed up for a month or longer and we won't miss it? Is this item necessary in our lives anymore? Should we donate it? If you're not reading every book on your shelf while you're showing your home, pack up the books you won't read. If your children haven't played with a toy in months, can you give it away or pack it up? Are you using all of the cologne bottles sitting on your dresser? Which ones can you pack up now? When was the last time you used that kitchen mix master? Will you use it in the next 30 to 60 days? Can you put it under the counter if you won't use it that often? Put away the items you can clearly pack up or give away. Be sure to label your boxes so you can find the items you want if you should need them before you move. How to keep your home clean without becoming insane. Okay, so now you've sorted through every room in your home and packed up a ton of belongings. You may have made trips to the thrift store, donating items, as well as having packed a lot of items so you have a head start for moving day. You have now created a nice, clean home. But how do you keep it clean while it's on the market? You and your family still need to live in your home. It's just part of life that your family will continue to make daily messes, like your children may leave a trail of toys and food all over the house daily. You need a plan to keep your home clean without going ballistic with your family members if they leave a mess. Set up a routine with each family member and reward them for keeping the home clean and organized. For example, your school-aged child can pick up their room before they go to bed. They can make their bed in the morning before they go to school. They can check to see if the mirrors in their bathroom are wiped down and that they have loaded the dishwasher. An evening chore for adults should be to straighten up the kitchen, sweep the floor, sort out the mail, and put all the laundry in the washing machine to wash. Assign duties to family members. The big jobs like mopping and vacuuming the floors, cleaning sinks and toilets, and folding laundry can be assigned to family members on alternating days. Set up a reward system to encourage your family members to keep cleaning. Praise, points, money, special time doing a project with one parent always works with children. A special reward for an adult also works too. Sit down and decide together how to keep everyone motivated to keep your home clean. You may like this idea so well, 
you keep it up long after you move from this home. If it's a seller's market, then you may have a lot of buyers looking at your home because there's little inventory in a seller's market and your home will sell quickly. If it's a buyer's market, then you may have your home on the market for a longer period of time, which means you have to keep your home cleaner longer. Do I really have to make my bed? I had one client, a woman in her late 40s, who hated making her bed. She told me she couldn't wait to get her home into escrow because she could stop making her bed every day. She said, my mom is really proud of me that I made my bed. I haven't made it for over 10 years. She was really bummed when the home fell out of escrow the first time and she had to make her bed again for a few weeks until we found a new buyer for her home. What happens when you get a request to see the home when you're home with a family and it's messy? Give each family member a laundry basket and have them go through the home scooping up clothes, toys, and items left out and throw them in the basket. Put the baskets in the trunk of your car to hide them. Sort through the items together after the buyers have left. If a potential buyer is arriving within an hour, prioritize your cleaning tasks in this order. Pick up clutter. If you don't have time to put it away, take it with you. Wash dishes or load them in the dishwasher. Empty all the trash receptacles in the home. Ensure that bathroom counters are free of toiletries and wipe them down. Hang fresh towels and close the shower curtain and lower the lid on the toilet. Vacuum. Straighten the linen on the beds. Straighten the sofa cushions and pillows. Open up all window coverings to let the sunshine in. Turn on all of the lights in the home, even in the closets. Use rewards to keep your home clean. We all want a perfect home when every buyer comes to see it. But if you can't make perfect happen, the best way to get close is to get work done up front by cleaning, decluttering, organizing, and depersonalizing your home before you even put it on the market. Use rewards and encouragement with your children to keep their rooms and play areas clean. Ask adults in the home to help clean as they go. Buyers will fall in love with your home if it shows organized, clean, and bright. You will want to have professional photographs taken of your home to show it off in the best way to attract more buyers. The Mindset of a Buyer Buyers want to find the best home for the best price. If your home is the cleanest in the neighborhood, it competes with one that's overpriced, even if it's remodeled. An overpriced home makes buyers drool, but they usually give up that home in lieu of a home that they can move into right away for the right price and with the least amount of work. Buying a fixer for a deeply discounted price is the only way a buyer will be interested in a home that shows poorly and needs a lot of work. An overpriced home means that buyers will offer a lower price for the home. And if the seller is not ready to sell the home for the current market price, it will sit on the market until the seller is ready to adjust the price to sell the home. Let me answer your questions about selling your home. Real estate is often complicated and stressful. I will be happy to answer all of your questions about paperwork, about my duties as a real estate agent, how I negotiate, and many tips to reduce any fear, frustration, or anxiety about selling your home. I apply my knowledge and experience to educate you about psychological real estate strategies that will attract more qualified buyers and help you net more money when you sell your home. I have created numerous articles, handouts, ebooks, and YouTube videos designed to educate you and your family, so your life as a seller is less exhausting and frightening. I have designed these tools to help you make your home sale go smoother and be less stressful for everyone involved. For low-cost ideas to spruce up your home in order to put more profit in your pocket when you sell your home, go to YouTube. In the search window, type in Dr. Dina Realtor. 
You can watch numerous videos to help you with your real estate goals. Here are a few examples of videos on my channel. Tips to make smaller rooms larger when selling your San Diego home. Six tips to sell your San Diego home for more money. Put more profit in your pocket with mirrors when you sell your home. Four stressful phases of selling your home. Upgrade your San Diego bathroom on a shoestring budget. Turn your San Diego condo balcony into paradise. Buying your first home in San Diego. And five steps baby boomers must take before caring for an aging family member. Let me help you sell your home. I have successfully worked with families from all walks of life who've hired me to sell their home. I have worked with families going through lifestyle transitions such as a divorce, the death of a loved one, families relocating, and couples downsizing, as well as families experiencing the loss of an income. All of these people needed my help to sell their home. I offer you my compassion, my expertise, and valuable strategies to help you make the most money with the least amount of hassle when you sell your home. I help you reduce stress while I guide you through every step of the sale. If you or a family member need assistance selling a home in San Diego, feel free to contact me to answer all of your questions. My email is doc at dinastacer.com. My phone or text is 858-229-8072. So there you have it, selling your home, tips to keep it clean and spotless while on the market. I look forward to hearing from you with any of your questions and I look forward to meeting you in person. I'm Dr. Dina, the doctor that makes house calls.